these are the rules for determining the oxidation numbers for a particular element. Uh, these rules are given in the form of a hierarchy, which means rule number one takes precedence over subsequent rules if there are conflicts that arise in a problem. So that, that's only an issue if more than one rule is playing a role. And we'll do some examples where that occurs in a different video. These are just the rules for learning how to assign oxidation numbers. Uh, the first rule is um, all about groups of stuff. So rule number one says the sum of the oxidation numbers in a neutral compound, and, and this is kind of redundant because compounds by definition are neutral. So for example, they give you Ca, Cl2. What they're saying is the oxidation number of Ca and the oxidation of Cl is going to equal zero because the oxidation number on a compound is zero. So the oxidation numbers of Ca and Cl are going to add up together and they're going to equal zero. Likewise, part two was also about groups, but this isn't about a compound. It's about a polyatomic ion. And where neutral compounds is kind of a um, redundant statement, a charged ion is kind of redundant too because that's what makes uh, an ion be an ion is it has a charge. So if, in their example, they have SO4 and it has a minus two charge. They're telling you the S's uh, plus the O's um, add up together to equal minus two. So if there isn't a number there, see there's no number up here in this corner, there's no number there, then you, then the number is a zero. And if there is a number there, then the number is whatever the number says it is. So that's rule number one, is all about groups and compounds, they equal zero, and ions equal whatever they say they are. Rule number two is about individuals. It says the oxidation number of an uncombined element is zero. So if I just take any old element off the periodic table, zinc, and I ask you, what's the oxidation number of zinc? It's all by itself. So the answer to that would be zero. They've given you examples here. What would be the oxidation number of just plain old sodium? It's all by itself, zero. The oxidation number for any monoatomic um, ion, <coughs> excuse me, that's an atom all by itself, is the charge on the ion. So if they say you have a Cl minus one, and then they ask you, what's the charge of the Cl? You say minus one. In a Cl minus one, the chlorine has a minus one charge, and it's actually said chloride when it's an ion. Rule number three has a variety of different things in it. And rule number three says fluoride, that's an F, has a minus one charge. And column number one elements on the periodic table, they kind of go like so. <laughs> There's two tall columns over here. And this is talking about those columns. So column number one is the first column. Everybody in that column is a plus one. And column number two is the second column. Everybody in that column has a plus two charge. And they're talking about when they're by themselves as ions. And then there's some individual elements. SC, which is here, and Y, which is underneath here, and AL, which is over here. Now, I make a word out of these. I call these the scaly, S-C-A-L-Y, the scaly three. And the reason I call them the scaly three is, first of all, there's three elements. It is in rule number three, so that helps me remember where I am in the hierarchy as well. And each of those in that rule have a plus three charge. So 
Rule number three is fluoride is a minus one. Elements, all of them, which all of the elements, that's lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium, they all have a plus one. And column two elements, which are beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium, all have a plus two charge. And then they also talk about the scaly three. That's scandium, yttrium, and aluminum all have a plus three charge. That's rule number three. That's kind of like a dividing line mentally for me because I know in the hierarchy I've got, first of all, I'm all about the group. Second of all, I'm all about the individual. It's not until the third rule that I start talking about um, individual ions, um, except for the fact that any ion that says by itself what it is, it is that. So this is when they're a group together in compounds. These are the rules for them. Rule number four is about the element hydrogen. And at the element hydrogen, when it's the word hydrogen, that's playing the role of a boy. So if you are hydrogen something, then you are, when you figure out your oxidation number, are a plus one. When you're something hydride and you're in the second location, you're a minus one. Um, and a way that I have a mnemonic device for that, um, because it's when hydrogen is combined with a non-metal, it's a plus one. When it's with a metal, it's a minus one. So I say with a metal, minus. So that um, I have like kind of a mnemonic device here with the M's. Metal minus one. Hydrogen with a metal minus one. Don't forget, when it's by itself, it's still zero. That's technically not a new rule. That's back up to rule number two. And rule number five um, is talking about um, oxygen. And it is, it says here always two, and it's always two except when it's not. So I'm just going to say it's a negative two. And know that when it's not a negative two, it's going to be when one of the rules above here had a conflict. They give you an example here of H2O2. Technically, that's not a conflict because hydrogen's rule came before oxygen's rule. So let's just use this H2O2 as our first example of how to assign oxidation numbers. First of all, I set it up a little box for each different element that I have. So I have H's and I have O's. They're each having a box here. What do those equal. Well, if you go all the way back up to rule number one, a neutral compound equals zero. So H2 plus O2 is going to equal to zero. In rule number four, it said that H2, when it's with a non-metal, and oxygen's a non-metal, is a plus one. And you'll notice here I have two of them. So the math of this problem is plus two in the box. So the question is, what number do both the oxygens have to equal in order to end up following rule number one, which is that they'll adding them together gives me zero. It means that both of these oxygens together are minus two. And if two things are minus two, what did the one thing equal? So this is that you got two of them. So what number times two gives me a negative two? And of course the answer to that is negative one. So oxygen in the formula H2O2, just the oxygen, is equal to negative one. So in the formula H2O2, oxygen's oxidation number is negative one. 
I don't really need to learn an exception for that because it abides by the hierarchy of rules because hydrogen's rule came before oxygen's rule. And I remember the compound H2O, which is a very common compound, hydrogen comes before oxygen. That's how I remember that hydrogen's rule comes before oxygen's rule. So I hope this helps you in assigning oxidation numbers.